Albertans heading outdoors this weekend, beware, it's tick season and the province has created a tick surveillance program to gather data on just how many ticks we've got in Alberta now and how many are carrying Lyme disease. Joining us tonight in Calgary, two guests who suffer from the disease, Susan McKinnis, she's also president of the Lyme Disease Association of Alberta, and Marianne Middleveen, a microbiologist and member of the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. Thank you for both for being here, and good evening, ladies. Welcome to Alberta Primetime. Good evening. Thanks for having us. Susan, with our new tick surveillance, Albertans can actually take the small arachnids now to be tested for Lyme disease, especially if they've been bitten by one of them. Are you surprised that the province is taking this action at this point? Well, Alberta statistics of Lyme-infected ticks are very important. Uh, the Alberta government has been finding, by their own admission, uh, Lyme-infected ticks in the province for years now. So my question actually is, why has this taken so long? Mm -hmm. um, but with that being said, it certainly is a step in the right direction. Marianne, the province says that it is finding, as Susan mentioned, a population of ticks that can carry Lyme disease and claims the species is actually new to Alberta. Do you agree with that? Actually, no. The first Borrelia burgdorferi infected tick was collected in 1994 and it was off of a uh, road killed uh, hare. And we know that infected ticks have been collected within the province of Alberta. We know that um, in studies with companion animals, they have collected infected ticks off of dogs that have never been outside of the province. Mm -hmm. So we also know that songbirds can, uh, migrating songbirds can carry the tick. And so uh, an infected tick could be found virtually anywhere within Canada. So Marianne, now Alberta does have this surveillance strategy and testing for Lyme disease. Is it well set up? Will it be effective? Or do you worry that the new strategy might have shortfalls? I'm hopeful that it will be effective and um, I hope that they will communicate the positive results to our physicians so our um, healthcare professionals are more aware of the possibility of contracting Lyme disease in the province of Alberta. And it would also be nice if the province were to possibly uh, release a risk assessment map so that in areas where there are increased risk of infection, the public could take extra precautions. Mm -hmm. And having said that, uh, the province still has not officially released to the public the results of the previous surveillance studies. Susan, what is it like in the first place to have Lyme disease? I don't think a lot of people are familiar with what that feels like. Is it painful? Is it lifelong? Is it different for everybody? What are the symptoms? Um, it is very painful. Um, some people will initially get a flu-like illness that just never seem to fully recuperate from it. I had a lot of numbness and tingling, dizzy spells, and within a few months I had debilitating neurological and cognitive problems, severe pain. Um, it took three years for me to get diagnosed in another country, not here in Canada, and I have been treating for a, a three years following that. And Susan, is that happening a lot? Albertans are being told here, no, you're fine, you don't have it, and then they go to the States somewhere else and the results are much different. What's going on with that? Um, it is happening at an alarming rate, actually. Al not only Albertans, but Canadians across the country um, the testing here in Canada is not picking up all cases of Lyme disease. And so we're following symptoms and learning about the disease from other Lyme organizations and um, finding that testing is, is better at certain labs in the United States. Do we need something more cohesive than each province doing their own thing, Marianne? Uh, it would be nice to have a national strategy, and that has been a, proposed by Elizabeth May. Um, I think that the risk for uh, contracting Lyme disease is different in each province, so there is increased risk in Ontario and in BC. 
So I'm not sure, you know, maybe some of the provinces that have increased risks will have to have a slightly different strategy. And I know that... It would be nice to have it recognized that it's possible to contract the disease in any province. Right. And I know, Susan, that's and something that you're... preparedness. That's something that your organization, Susan, is working on. Thank you both for being here. We uh, appreciate your comments tonight. Susan McKinnis is president of the Lyme Disease Association of Alberta, and Mary Ann Middleveen is a microbiologist and a board member uh, on the LDAA as well.